Hey guys, hope you're well. So in the previous lesson, we started looking at velocity time graphs. And I said to the towards the end of that lesson that if you need another practice example, uh, you should go to the next video in the in the playlist. And here it is, we're going to be doing one example in this lesson, where we're just going to be going over what we learned about in the previous lesson. And it's just for those learners that feel like they maybe just want another or more. Uh, practice. So we're just going to be doing this one question for this lesson. Sarah goes for a drive. Assume north is positive. Okay, and it's a velocity time graph. So if we look at this first part, would you say Sarah is moving north or is Sarah moving south? Well, if you look at the velocity values, they're all positive. So that would imply that we are moving north. So for that first part, we are moving north. And can you see the velocity values are increasing? So that means that she is accelerating. So we are accelerating. So we're getting faster and faster and faster. Now for this next part, many learners tell me that that is where Sarah is not moving, but that is not correct. Those learners are confusing a displacement graph with a velocity graph. Think about it. Sarah is driving at 40 meters per second. So that is her velocity, or you could think of it in that situation as her speed. She's moving at 40 meters per second. So she's not standing still. She is moving and she's still, her, her velocity is positive. So she's moving north. So this part here, she was speeding up. Now she's moving at a constant speed, okay? So we could say here, um, moving north at a constant velocity. So the acceleration is zero. Acceleration is zero. Now for this section here, some learners will tell me this is where Sarah has turned around. Once again, that's not correct. That would only be true if this was a displacement graph. So, so what we can see here is that Sarah is moving north. Okay. Why do I say she's moving north? Well, if you look at her velocity values, 30, 20, 10, the velocity values are all positive. So she's definitely moving north. But as we are moving, can you see that her velocity goes from 40, then it goes to 30, then it goes to 20, then it goes to 10. So she's slowing down. So let's say here, slowing down, but that's another word for decelerating. Whoa, decelerating. And then when we get to this point over here, if you read off her velocity value, it's zero. So at that moment, Sarah has stopped. Okay, so Sarah has stopped. Then if we move on to this section over here. Now some learners will say that she's slowing down because this part was slowing down. But if you just look at the velocity values starts at 10, then goes to 20 and then goes to 30. So Sarah is going faster and faster and faster. The negative just means that she's now going in the other direction. So over here, she turned around, she turned around over there. Turned around. Because in this whole area, she was traveling north. Now she's traveling south. But here she's going faster and faster and faster because you can see the velocities are going 10, 20, 30. The negative just means we're going in the negative direction. So we can say here that we're moving south, but we are going faster and faster, so we're accelerating. Okay, then I'm going to use a purple color over here. So remember, we're not standing still. If you look at the velocity, Sarah is going 30. Okay, now I know that this isn't perfectly lined up. Oh no, it's actually pretty good. Um, so this is 30. Uh, so Sarah is moving. She's just moving south. So we could say moving south at constant velocity. And so we could say that the acceleration in that area is zero. Then I'm going to use a dark blue over here. Now, if you just look at the velocity values, they're going from minus 30 and then they're going to minus 20, minus 10. So the, the 30 is going to 20, it's going to 10. So she's slowing down over here. She's slowing down. So we could say slowing down. But if you look at the values, it's negative. So she's moving south. So she's moving south. And then another name for slowing down would be she's decelerating, decelerating. Let's go do some questions on this graph now. All right, so here's the first question. It says, determine the acceleration for the first four seconds. Okay, so we know that 
acceleration is equal to the change in the velocity over the change in time, which is final velocity minus initial velocity over final time minus initial time. So we're only using the first four seconds. So that would be there. So your final position would then be there, or your final velocity, sorry, and your final time would be there, and then your initial time and your initial velocity, I mean initial time and initial velocity is there. So if we had to go fill everything in, your final velocity is 40, your initial velocity is zero. We're starting at zero. Now your final time is four seconds, and your initial time is zero seconds. So if we had to go work this out, we end up with 10, and the units of um, acceleration is meters per second to the negative two. Now we're getting a positive answer, and north is positive, so we would say north. Remember that acceleration is a vector, so it needs direction, and it needs um, magnitude. Okay, so there's north. The next one, determine the total distance. Okay, so we or displacement and distance. So what we've said is that when you have, and you've got to remember this, guys, when you have a velocity graph and they talk about distance or displacement, I want you to think about area. Well done if you're getting that, okay? So we're going to go work out the area uh, for all the different parts. So we can see there's a triangle over there, which I'll call A. Then we've got a rectangle over here, which I'll call B. And then we've got, let's just position this nicely. And then we'll call the C for that triangle. And then there's a little triangle over here, which we'll call D, a rectangle over there, which we'll call E. Oh no, that rectangle goes up to there. Okay, so we'll just say that that's 15. And then we've got a, a little triangle over here. So this would be, here. okay, so quite a few different shapes. So let's go work out the area of all of those. So we'll start with A, which is a triangle. So the area of a triangle is half base times height. So the base would be this length here, which is four. Now the height would be from here to here, which is 40, because it's on the Y axis, so it's 40. And if we had to work this out, you're gonna get 80 meters over there. Now to go do section B, it's a rectangle. So that's just length times breadth, so it's this length. So to go from four to eight, how far is that? That's four. And then this height over here is 40. Okay, multiplied by 40. And so that's 160 meters. Then this little triangle over here um, is gonna be half, because it's a triangle. And then base, base is from eight until 10, so that's two. And then the height is 40. And so this would give us 40 meters. Okay, now we're gonna go on to the little section D. So D is a triangle, so it's half, and then the base is from 10 till 12, so that's two. Now the height goes to negative 30, so the height will be negative 30. And if you had to work this out, you end up with negative 30 uh, meters. Then for section E, now we're just gonna assume that this goes to, this part here goes to 15 in a test, or in an exam, they'll make it a lot clearer for you. Okay, so for E, it's a uh, rectangle. So we're just gonna take this length here, which is from 12 up to 15, so that's three. And then this length is negative 30 once again, so that's gonna give us negative 90 meters. And then we've got this last little triangle over here, and so that's gonna be a half, and then the base length, look at the base, it goes from 15 to 16. So that means that that base length is only one. And then the height of this triangle is also gonna be negative 30. And if you work this out, you end up with negative 15 meters. So to work out displacement, you take all of the, you add all of these together. So 80 plus 160 plus 40. But now with displacement, you do look at the sign. So it's gonna be a negative 30 then you're gonna be plusing a negative 90, and then you're gonna be plusing a negative 15. And so you should get 145 meters. So because we're getting a positive answer, that means that the um, displacement is north. Remember, displacement is a vector. So we'll say 145 meters north. Now for question C, it says determine the total distance. So with distance, you just add all of the numbers together, but you don't worry about any negatives. You just add everything together. And so that'll be 415 meters, 
115 meters. And then the last one says, uh, calculate the acceleration between 8 and 12. Okay, so acceleration is change in velocity over change in time, which is final velocity minus initial velocity over final time minus initial time. But now they're only talking between 8 and 12 seconds. So that would be this part over here. So this this part here, the, the last one, would be your final and your final time. And then this part would be your initial and your initial time. And so your final velocity is going to be negative 30. So you put it in like that, minus. And then your initial velocity is 40. Then your final time is 12. And your initial time is 8. Go ahead, calculate all of that. And you get negative 17.5. So then what we do is we say 17.5 meters per second to the negative 2, because that's the units of acceleration. Now, North is positive, we got a negative answer, so that means we are going to say south. So we would say uh, 17.5 meters per second, and then south. 